Hey guys, in this video I'm going to teach you how to set up a PlayStation emulator so you can play your favorite games of yesterday on your computer of today, upgraded and at high definition. I'm going to make this as simple as possible so no matter what your technical background is, it won't matter, you can just follow along and we can get you up and running. I'm also going to go as in depth as I need to to make sure that we get your games looking as good as possible. A lot of people get stuck at the BIOS error so I'm going to be explaining what the BIOS is and how you can find it and I'm going to put timestamps below so if you're here specifically for that you can just skip forward with that link. My name is FTG Bro, I stream retro games on Twitch. If you have a Twitch account and you want to stop by, I invite you over to my channel with the link below. And if this video helps you, a thumbs up would be great. Without further ado, let's crack straight into it. Man, f*** this game, bro. Okay, cool. So I'm on a brand new computer install and I'm going to do this completely from scratch. We're going to go to Google and we're going to search EPSX E. Or you can go to EPSXE.com with the link below. Go to the downloads. And this is a really old emulator, but it's tried, tested, and true, and it still holds up today. So just take my word for it, guys. I know the website looks old, but you have my word that this is a really good program. Get the Windows version, skip the ad, save the file, and open. You're gonna wanna make a new folder, name it whatever you like, PlayStation, PlayStation emulator, whatever, it doesn't matter. Put it wherever you wanna store the files. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop. If you wanna be more neat and tidy, find a custom folder, tuck it away somewhere. Drag all the files from the zip that we downloaded into that folder. Close the zip file so we don't get confused and open the EPSXE file. When you open it for the first time, you're going to come to the first time setup wizard, click config, and you're going to get an error message saying that you don't have the BIOS file. So click OK. We're going to close this and we're going to go download the BIOS file. Okay, so quickly a little explanation on what the BIOS is. The BIOS is just the software that runs the hardware. So whenever you started up your PlayStation, the BIOS was actually turning it on when you saw that cool intro logo. On the wiki here, we have all the different PlayStation models. And you can see that for each different version of a PlayStation, they had a different version of the BIOS. We're just going to stick with the tried and true. So there's two versions that we can download. 1001 for North American and 7502 for European. Go to Google and search SCPH and the version number 1001.bin, maybe download. That's where I stop. Because the BIOS is copyrighted software, it's illegal to distribute. And I'm not going to be giving you guys any links. I'll let you find that out on your own. I suggest downloading and installing an ad block, just in case. When you have the BIOS file downloaded, all you have to do is drag it into the BIOS folder, right at the top of the list of files we copied over earlier, and run EPSXE again. Go to config, click wizard guide at the bottom, and it's gonna bring us back to the setup. Start config. Now we're gonna choose this file here. Click next. Choose Pete's OpenGL2. Next, no choice. Uh, always choose WNT. The ASPI is for very old computers. And then we're going to get to the controller config. Click on controller one, change it to X input if you're using an Xbox controller or PlayStation 4 controller. Some generic controllers might have to be in direct input. We're going to choose X input and we're going to choose DualShock from the list below that. Click OK. Click Next. And it says we're done. So now I'm going to hop back onto my main build. We can go through the video settings and we can build a games library. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is check the video settings, click config, video. And at the top, the two big settings are windowed or full screen. If you want to just be in a casual window, choose window mode, and then you can type in the resolution of your choice here. I would suggest choose a four by three resolution. Uh, that way the game will be in its native resolution and it won't be stretched in any way. If you're in full screen mode, I would just highly recommend just keep it in your normal desktop resolution. I think most computers are 1080p by this point. If not in your 720p, go ahead and find it there. But if you choose a, if you choose the wrong resolution, it just scales. It's just it's not a big deal. Next, at the bottom to keep things really easy, we have two default settings. We have fast for weaker computers and for stronger computers, click nice. At this day and age, I'd be surprised if a computer would have a problem running any of these games. So just start on nice. And if it has any problems, come back here and click the fast setting. If you have a really, really strong computer, we're going to go back to these settings at the top here and we're going to choose very high for the resolution scaling. We're going to keep the aspect ratio on one, but if you want it to just stretch to your widescreen, you can go ahead and click zero. I like mine in the traditional 4x3 so the game looks like it did back in the day. Leave it default, leave it default. If you want to upscale the textures, which I would recommend, 
go ahead and choose extended smooth sprites and high res textures you're going to choose two times super sal for frames limit just leave it on auto detect that should be fine and we're going to leave this all default full screen filters shader effects we're going to leave on full screen smoothing depending how strong your computer is go ahead and crank this to maximum this checkbox right here is pretty important so this will make the movies and the cinematics look a lot better definitely recommend it and i would leave all the others unchecked click ok if you need to go back and reset your control settings under config you can go to game pads port one add one that way if it doesn't detect it as x input you can go to direct input and then you can manually push the buttons and calibrate your controller that way for example if i hit l2 i click on it and press l2 on my controller click ok so i'm not going to tell you how to get the games obviously when you do download your games, put them all in one folder so it's organized. Click file, open game list, click folders at the bottom, and go to the folder with all your games in it by clicking the dot dot dot. Click OK. Click refresh. They all show up. I'm going to go ahead and load Resident Evil. So you're going to notice at the top that it says analog off. The old PlayStation had a button on the controller that toggled analog on or off. That's actually the F5 hotkey on your keyboard. And then you can see analog is on now. If you want to toggle between window screen and full screen, hold alt and press enter. Thanks for watching. If this helped you guys, a thumbs up would be great. I do want to get this channel up and running and YouTube needs to know I exist. That's the only way they find out. Thank you. Have a good one.